couple of weeks ago, you'll remember that I made a video all about Beyond the Wire, a brand new World War I first-person shooter being made by Redstone Interactive, a brand new team, but being backed by the makers of Squad. The game is mainlining historical accuracy as much as it can, while seeking to maintain an entertaining experience, and the game is likely going to follow in the same gameplay footsteps as Squad, which is a more tactical team-based shooter. And as of yesterday, the development team at Redstone, they released some of their first proper information about what we can really expect from their closed alpha testing. They gave us a part of a list of weapons that we're going to be allowed to use. Now it is worth remembering that with the launch of Beyond the Wire, when it first goes into early access later in the summer, the game is going to feature American, French and German forces to begin with. The British forces, they will be added to the game in a post-launch update. Now with that being said, this weapons list that we've got today, it only includes French and German weaponry. The American stuff has been left out. Perhaps that will be teased at a later date or something like that. All of the images you are about to see as well, they're in-engine renders. They're not gameplay renders, they're not screenshots, so... Well, they are screenshots, but keep in mind they are in-engine, and everything at this stage is really subject to change because it's all pre-release stuff. Okay then, first up we have the Gewehr 1898, the iconic bolt-action rifle that was the standard issue to German forces all the way from 1898 through to 1935, just a few years before the start of World War II. It set the standard for bolt-action weapons at the time, and it's still replicated through various other models and units around the world to this day. The internal magazine, that could be loaded with five round stripper clips of 7.92 by 57 mm Mauser caliber rounds, and that was the service cartridge used by the German Empire through both world wars. Over 9 million of these rifles were produced during its lifetime, and the excellent accuracy and stopping power the rifle held made it extremely popular, even beyond the German army. Now, in Beyond the Wire, the Gewehr 98 appears to come with a bayonet attached to it, which might be part of that close quarters physical melee system that the team is building. Next up, we have another bolt action rifle. You'll probably know this one if you watched any of my Battlefield 1 content from a couple of years ago. This is the Labelle 1886, the French standard issue rifle of the pre World War 1 era and during World War 1 as well. At the time, it was known as the first bolt action rifle in the world to use smokeless powder ammunition. That was invented just a couple of years before the Labelle was invented. It was known as a very hard-hitting and well-built weapon, and it could be relied on to work well in adverse conditions, like a muddy trench on the Western Front. Now, the Labelle featured a tube magazine, which is something that most other bolt-action rifles didn't feature, and that meant that it could hold more rounds than the rifles of other nations fighting in the war, and that reduced the amount of time that you might need to reload, or the amount of times you might have needed to reload, but the reload process itself was fairly slow, and the tube magazine was actually considered obsolete during the time of World War I. And the lack of a wooden handguard on top of the weapon, that meant after several shots fired, the hands of the holder could end up being burned. Now the image here in Beyond the Wire, that shows the distinctive Rosalie bayonet being attached to the weapon, and again, just like the Gewehr 98, that bayonet could have some sort of impact in the melee system that the team is also building. Moving on now from bolt action weapons to machine guns. This one, again, I'm sure you're familiar with if you watched any of my Battlefield 1 content back in the day, or more recently, some of my Battlefield 5 content as well. This is the Masson machine gun, a Danish creation credited as being the world's first light machine gun to be produced in large quantities. Designed in the late 1890s, the Masson stayed in service around the world, albeit in much smaller numbers, for over 100 years, and it became a weapon that many countries adopted during the First World War. It was an expensive weapon to produce, but its reliability shone through, and it was ordered in the thousands. 34 different countries bought the weapon in a dozen different calibers before and after World War I, so that gives you some idea of this weapon's reputation. Here in Beyond the Wire, the weapon is going to feature a 30 round detachable box magazine, and it will be chambered for the same 7.92 by 57 mm Mauser round as the Gewehr 98, and that signals it as a German weapon here. 
And then the other machine gun that we have on the list is a French one, the Shoshar machine gun. When compared to other weapons of the time, it does look decidedly odd, but this weapon really pushed forward what it meant to use machine guns during combat. Designed by a committee, the weapon was intended to be carried into battle by just one person, rather than a full machine gun squad, and it could bring the kind of firepower of a stationary machine gun in a portable package. The result of that committee's work was a very strange weapon that did have quite a few issues, but it stood out as one of the more unique weapons of the time. It included a pistol grip, an inline stock, a detachable magazine, and select fire options. It made it a really effective weapon if you could keep it clean, but a lot of the time you couldn't keep it clean because the operating environment in the Western Front basically meant muddy trenches. Low quality metal had been used to make as many units as possible and the open design of the magazines meant that mud could just really easily get into the weapon mechanism causing jams or blocks. About 75% of the stoppages on Shoshars came from dirt in the magazine. Now, in Beyond the Wire, the weapon will be chambered for the 8x50mm Lebel round, and it will feature the 18 round detachable magazine alongside a bipod as well. And now we come on to sidearms. We have two different ones that we can look at here. First up, we have the P08 pistol, commonly known as the Luger. In Beyond the Wire, it will be chambered for the 9x19mm Parabellum round, which is the same one that was then used in the experimental MP18 submachine gun with the Stormtroopers. The Luger pistol, it became the standard issue sidearm of the German army. It was held by officers, assault troopers, signalers, messengers, gun crews, and NCOs. But initially, it was sold to Switzerland in the 1900s, chambered for a different caliber, but it was then changed back to the Parabellum for German army army use. It features an 8 round box magazine and it will likely be the default sidearm for players of the German faction when you're playing Beyond the Wire. And then lastly we have the Model 1892 Revolver, a French double action revolver developed in the late 1800s. It was originally intended to serve as the French Army's officer's sidearm, but it also ended up being issued to the French Navy as well. And like the P08 for the Germans, I expect the 1892 to become the default sidearm for the French forces in Beyond the Wire. So of those six weapons, I can't really say that I'm surprised by any of the inclusions. Having played Battlefield 1, and I am still playing Battlefield 1 to this day on and off, I'm exposed to these weapons quite often and I have a general understanding of World War 1 weaponry, but... The team behind the game seems to be sticking true to their words when they said they were building a more historically accurate, authentic experience. Lots of the combat coming from long rifles and machine guns, and four of the weapons we have here are long rifles and machine guns, so they are sticking to their word. A note at the bottom of the article, however, states that there will be many more weapons included in the game, and this is just a slice of what's to come, which is somewhat reassuring. As I mentioned, no American or British weapons have been mentioned so far in this list, but I think we can expect certain iconic weapons like the Lee Enfield long rifle, the Springfield rifle, maybe the 1917 American Enfield rifle, the M1911 pistol, and plenty of other iconic weapons as well. This weapons list is just the first of many development updates that we're going to see from the team at Redstone over the next few months, as we get closer to that closed alpha of Beyond the Wire in the summer. So if you are interested in this game and you want to learn more about it, make sure you keep checking on their website for more information drops and make sure you're subscribed to this channel as well. I'll be covering all the details that you need to know when that stuff about the American weapons come out, potential maps and locations, gameplay details, development updates. I'll pretty much be covering everything here on the channel because I am really interested in, in this game and I want to see where the development team go with it. Having played a little bit of Squad in the past, that's kind of a game that I can get into. It's much more slower paced than what I'm used to, but it does produce some really tense gunfights, so if any of that is going to transfer over to Beyond the Wire, then I'm certainly going to be playing quite a bit of this game. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. Is Beyond the Wire looking like a game you're really interested in, or are you more of a fan of modern shooters these days? Let me know down below, and do leave me a rating as well, it is greatly appreciated. And I'll catch you all in the next one.